All right, tonight we're going to take a look at Unit 6, Lesson F, the square root method. Our objective here is to be able to solve a quadratic equation by the square root method. So just to recall here, if I take the square root of a number, so if I take the square root of 16, remember we're going to have those two answers. We're going to have plus or minus 4, which means if I take 4 times 4, I get 16. Or if I take negative 4, times negative 4, I also get that positive 16. So, remember, you are going to have those two solutions here. When we're using the square root method, our b term is missing. So if you guys remember, our quadratics are always written as ax squared plus bx plus c. So, to, in order be, to be able to use the square root method, this middle term, this bx term, has to be missing. So, if we take a look at our first example here, we don't have that b term. So, we want to get this x squared all by itself. So, the first thing that we're going to do, do is divide both sides by 2. So, I have x squared equals 8. Now, I want to get the x by itself. Right now, it's squared. So, to get rid of it, we're going to take the square root. If I do that to the left side, remember I do, do that, have to do that to the right side. So, oops, this should be 4. Sorry. So if I take the square root of both sides, I get x equals plus or minus 2, which means x can either be 2 or x can be negative 2. We're going to have those two solutions here. So here for this next one, I have 4x squared equals 9. So again, I want to get this x by itself. So the first thing I'm going to do is divide both sides by 4. So I have x squared equals 9 fourths. Now to get the x by itself, again, I'm going to have to take the square root. And remember, if I do that to the left side, we have to do that to the right. So I have x is equal to, now remember, if you take a look at both of these terms, they're perfect squares, so we don't even have to move this into a decimal of any kind. The square root of 9 is 3, and the square root of 4 is 2. So our solutions are going to be either positive 3 halves or a negative 3 halves. Now if I move on to this last one, we want to get this b squared, or the b, all by itself. So to do that, i got to get rid of this 12 first. So I'm going to subtract 12 from both sides. So I have b squared equals a negative 7. Now remember, to get b by itself, I have to take the square root. So I get b equals. One thing you guys should notice here is that we can never take the square root of a negative number. So we're actually not going to have a solution for b. So there are no real solutions because we can't take the square root of a negative number. So we're actually going to go and skip these u tries for now and move on to example 2. Example 2, we're going to do the same thing. The only difference here is our answers aren't going to come out as neat as they did in the previous example. So we just want to make sure that we always round to the nearest hundredth. So for this first one, we still want to get that x squared by itself. So the first thing that we're going to do is add 11 to both sides. So I have 3x squared equals 18. Next thing, I'm going to divide both sides by 3. So I have x squared equals 6. Now I want to get that x by itself, so I'm going to take the square root of both sides. So I have x is equal to, plus or minus, remember we're still going to have those two solutions, and when I round this to the nearest hundredth, I get 2.45. Now this next one here, when we move on to B, we're going to follow these same steps. We still want to get the X by itself. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add 9 to both sides. So I have 2X squared equals 20. Next thing, I'm going to divide both sides by 2. So I have X squared equals 10. Now I want to get the x by itself, so I'm going to go ahead and take the square root of both sides. So I get x equals, now remember we have those two solutions again, 
and when I round, I'm going to get 3.16. If you guys take this, either 3.16 or negative 3.16, and plug it back in for x, it should be equal to 11. So all of these solutions for each problem should check back in the original. If they don't, then we made a mistake somewhere. These ones might be off by a little bit because we are approximating the solution, but they should be really close to being equal to 7 or being equal to 11. Alright, so once again, we're going to skip these for now and go ahead and flip over to the other side. And we have our last example. We're going to do the same thing again, except our problems look a little bit different. This time we have an entire quantity squared. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to divide both sides by 2. What this does is this cancels the 2 out on the left side so that I'm left with x minus 2 squared equals 9 because 18 divided by 2 is 9. Now to get this quantity by itself I'm actually going to take the square root of it. So I have x minus 2 equals plus or minus 3. Now to find out what x is equal to, we have to take our left side and say it's equal to a positive 3. So x minus 2 equals positive 3. Or we have x minus 2 equals negative 3. Notice that nothing changes on the left side of our equation. The only thing that changes is the sign on the right. So for this first one, the first thing I'm going to do to get x by itself is I'm going to add 2 to both sides. So one solution is x equals 5. The other one I'm also going to add 2 to both sides. And x equals a negative 1. So these are both solutions for x. So if we took those and plug them back into our original, <coughs> our answer should check and be equal to 18. Now if we move on to part B, we are going to do the same first step. We want to get this quantity by itself. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to divide both sides by that negative 3 so that it's gone from the left side of my equation. So I have x minus 3 squared equals a positive 6. Now we want to get this quantity by itself, so I'm going to take the square root so that those cancel. And I have x minus 3 equals plus or minus 2.45. So now we've got to find our solution for x again. So the first one's going to be x minus 3 equals a positive 2.45. And then the other one's going to be x minus 3 equals a negative 2.45. So now we have to solve each of these equations for x. So the first thing I'm going to do is add 3 to both sides on this left equation. So those cancel there and I'm left with x equals 5.45. On the other side I'm going to add 3 to both sides again. And I'm left with x equals 0.55. So these are both solutions again for x. If we plug them back in they should be equal to that negative 18. Now this last set of U-tries you guys are going to work on in class, but please make sure that you take a few minutes to fill out the bottom part here, what you can do after you watch the video. Alright, have a good night.